Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Woo. Good evening. Glory to God. Yes. Welcome to another session, another gathering of worship and word. the word, worship and word. Amen. The word of God tells us that we should worship him in spirit and in truth. And yes. we want to welcome everybody. You know what we want you to do this evening? We want you to come on in and tag your friends and uh, share this broadcast with somebody else. That's right. That you're watching on Facebook Live, Gary Deloach, uh, Facebook Live, and hopefully our YouTube channel, which yes. you can get into uh, by typing in Gary Deloach Ministries. And I pray that you all had a wonderful uh, service today, that you worship the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. And that you heard from God today, whether through the priest word of your pastor. And he said, I will give you pastors according to my own heart. That's right. Who shall feed you with what? Knowledge, Knowledge and, understanding. and understanding. And that's what he says in the word. So hopefully right. you receive some knowledge from your pastor. Yes. It is imperative that you hear from your pastors. Yes. Because God gives them things for life to help your life. Yes. Amen. Be victorious as God would have it. That tells you one thing. Yes. That God has an order. Yes, he does. God has an ordained order for a leadership. Amen. And Amen. a connection with the followers so that we can be strengthened. Amen. Amen. So now it's another time of refreshing in the word. Yes. So reach out there. Tell somebody about the broadcast. Amen. Later on, you want to greet everybody and tell them what's on your heart right now. Yes, I wanted to say greetings to you. You know, this is a Sunday evening. Most yes. people are relaxing. Right. Just want to get some word in. We got some in a little earlier, knowing that we were going to have to uh, be on with you guys at 630. Yes. So we have been feasting pretty, really good. I almost said pretty good, really good. Our third service this evening. Oh, yes. So to speak, yes. <laughs> when celebrating with our friends, uh, the winds, uh, Apostle Victor, and prophetess happy anniversary yes Amen. indeed prophetess robin Wynn. both also are doctors so doctors win we went and celebrated with them today after our service and um then after that we just came home and just got fed ourselves Amen. you know we are not exempt everyone needs to be fed he Everyone needs to be. Yes. That's right. Amen. Who ministers to the minister? That's, that's a good mm -hmm. question. Yeah. So we have been uh, just really feasting today and been getting a lot of confirmation today, oh, as a matter Lord, of fact. Yes. So it has been a very good day. Making the hands go up. Yes. Hands have been, we've been like, oh, God just spoke that. Yes. And evidently, he wanted us to be in position to hear that what he had said to us mm -hmm. is confirmed in the mouth of two. Or three witnesses. Or three witnesses. Every word is what? Established. Is established or confirmed. That's so right. We got confirmation today. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yes, we did. And so I just want to do some very brief announcements so we can get to the word yes. tonight. Yes. I am excited. We're in another phase of teaching, another topic of teaching, even though it is linked to the, the topic that Apostle just finished of Sonship. So just I want to do some brief announcements, then we want to jump right in. Mm -hmm. Amen. So then, uh, first and foremost, we want to talk about, uh, you see on uh, YouTube channel, Gear Deloach Ministries, there are other messages out there. As a matter of fact, I went and looked for something. I noticed that there were over 100. I was like, oh, my goodness. So over 100 teachings are out there for you all to, mm -hmm. to go and peruse and, and, and dine and just have a, a wonderful time in the Word of God. And also want to uh, let you know if I'm going too fast, if there's something that you heard that you want to go back and listen to, hey, that's where you go to do it. YouTube channel, Gary Deloach Ministries. And also want to um, just give you a little information on the family prayer revival. We're doing yes. this every week until the mm -hmm. Lord says stop. So uh, sometimes we get, we lose the assignment and we, we think that uh, it's starting to fizzle. So I think I'm just going to cut it off. Never cut it off unless the Lord unless tells the Lord. you to cut it off. The mm -hmm. uh, blessings that serve whom when his Lord comes shall be found so mm -hmm. doing. So we have to continue with the assignment until God says, stop it. That's enough. 
So that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that we're doing that. So we're praying every week for the family and the family is the uh, God's uh, smallest battle formation in the earth. So we want to pray for the family as Satan has attacked the family. We want to build up and restore the family through prayer. And, Amen. And sweetheart, revival is a reality. Yes. Uh, in the last days, God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons mm -hmm. and your daughters yes. are going to do what? Prophesy. Yes. Come on. So what is he saying? He's bringing the family together. Yes. Uh, even the family is included in God's end time purposes. Yes. And what's going on is restoration yes. of God's divine order. That's and can good. I say a few words concerning what is he doing with fatherhood and sonship? Yes. Um, God is realigning the body. We've seen it all these last two years, especially. Yes realigning the body for alignment with him come yes. on uh, repositioning for us to get in right position yes so that god's order his authority will not be breached yes then when we have the right order come on god has his way in the earth through his people as he so wants to do amen amen and so we just want to invite you to come and pray with us come agree yes. with us we're not going to ask you to pray but we are going to ask you to pray and agree with us we have um, those that will pray um apostle prays sometimes i pray sometimes um one of our other minister um uh, ministers uh sister Geraldine, she prays sometimes most of the time we're going to definitely have our our lead prayer intercessor and her name is um, Sister Priscilla. She goes forth. All of them are ministers. So they're going forth and they're praying the word of God. So we just ask you to come and agree with us in prayer as we pray for the family. And that's the line. It's, we don't have to go to a place. You just call up that number. You put in that access code. And then you're linked together with us in technology. Wonderful that we can use it to expand and do kingdom business. Yes, Glory to God. Thank so, God. amen. And also want to let you know, um, while we're praying for family, we also take prayer requests. We also take prayer requests. So if you would like to give us your prayer request, hey, there's where you can call and give us that prayer request so we can pray during the time of family prayer revival. Or if you want to email, you said, oh, it's going to be a little bit too long for the um, voicemail. So email it to us. We do check it. We will pray with you and for you and your situation. And also, if you want to give a praise report, you say, hey, I've been on the line. I prayed, y'all agreed, mm -hmm. and I have a praise report. You can give it, uh, get it to us that way as well, those two ways. And also, I want to give you um, just a little more information. Now, morning manifestation usually occurs on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Morning um, morning manifestation of the apostle. But this particular week, oh, um, that's not the one I wanted to show you. Huh? There's a change in the name. Yes. The week. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. So then... Uh, instead of being on Wednesday, I see that um, uh, maybe there is something that we had to happen. So let me just take that off. So Tuesday this week, Apostle, at the same time, he will be doing ju just this week only yes. morning manifestations. And so please, on Tuesday, he won't be doing it Wednesday this week. Tuesday, 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. You will be so blessed as he goes through his, this series on kingdom worship. And it has been a blessing. I listen. I can't comment a lot, but I do listen while I'm at work. So I encourage you to, if you want to have something going in the background while you're working, that you can still be feeding your spirit, that's a great time to do it. Amen. And also, I want to give you an opportunity on the front end, opportunity on the front end to give. Mm -hmm. And so in your giving, uh, those are two ways online that you can give through Cash App or through PayPal. And again, you can always go back and get this information later. And then you say, hey, I don't I use those or I don't have them. Not a problem. What we do is we still have a P.O. box. If you want to send it through the P.O. box, here's that information as well. Just wanted to get through all, uh, a lot of these announcements so we can get right to the heart of the matter. And just one more thing, we like to celebrate with people. So we want to say 
Happy birthday yes. to all of the October birthdays. Yes, and so, yes, because we celebrate birthday. Mm -hmm, oh, time. we celebrate his birthday all big month. Time, it even goes time. into the next month now. And we celebrate mine all month. And so we want to celebrate you all month. So every time we come on, we want to celebrate your October birthday. Praise the Lord. And so thank you so much for and, being with us. Let's send that all the way down to Florida to Matthew. Matthew. Brother Matthew. Okay, yes. Who had a birthday, the son of our prayer uh, leader. Yes. Sister. Happy birthday, Matthew. Yes, happy birthday. Woo! Yes. And, and many more with long life. Yes. He will satisfy you. Yes, Amen. You and so good evening, Sister Geraldine. Good evening, Julie. We are about to jump on this next topic. So without further ado, want to turn it over to Apostle. Please receive him, Apostle, my sweetheart. Apostle, and uh, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> right. I was going to say, watch it. Look watch it. it. I was going to say some of those uh, we we have heard over time. You know, me and my husband has never had a crossword, <laughs> so I was I laughed before I was about to say that. Uh, me and my husband, we have had a crossword. My my husband and I. Okay. My husband, oh, my husband and I have had <laughs> crosswords, but we believe in love. We also believe in repentance oh god yes we believe in forgiveness <laughs> we, we don't share everything about our style of life no we don't our marriage but sometimes there are things that can help encourage others yes sweetheart this is uh one of the things that we say and i know i feel in my spirit that you are in agreement yeah we love each other yes 100 percent of the time, time. now what you, you hear that? Y'all put it on your little Facebook yes. post or responses to a post. 100. 100. Yeah. 100. That means you're all in. Yes. We love each we other. We love each other. One more time. 100% 100 100 of the time. But we don't like each well, other. No. 100% of the time. But and it's okay to be honest okay. like that. And guess what? We've never, we're not doing marriage seminar. Apparently not, but somebody needs this, I believe. But we've never got under. 85 hush your mouth <laughs> just hush your mouth we, I mean, we, he still has we, not been under 90 percent. so i don't know we, when i went under 90 we 90%. are always <laughs> close to that not far away from that 100 percentile or whatever yeah uh, so that tells you amen but the fact is when when we're not liking each other at times yes guess what the love Covered. kicks in yes, and it, it covers does. Doing it, it does it does exactly what the scripture says it covers that's right that's true all sin and a multitude of sin and fault yes fault love because i'm going to tell you love ventilates itself yes through giving yes sharing yes amen amen and another part of love is the willingness to forgive and to ask for forgiveness and to ask for mm -hmm. forgiveness amen amen and and it's a wonderful thing Yes, so it is. We, we just I appreciate those accolades, my my sweetheart. I appreciate the introduction. Yes. And we're ready to to do the word. I want Let's you to reach it. out, everybody. We love teaching the word, preaching the yes. word. We love worshiping. And let me just say, worshiping is not just the song, the dance, That's right. the lifting of the hands. You'll hear that in my teachings during the week. It is a lifestyle, a lifestyle of obedience. Yes. Amen. That we may please them. These people have a chosen for myself formed formed for myself created formed chosen yes. for myself they shall show forth my praise yes and he created us to do that that we may please him that's right that we may please him so we want to please the lord in all that we say and all that we do my mom used to sing a little song i just want to please jesus that's it and all i say and do i just want to please jesus then there would be a question how about you Amen. All right. So here we are. We are starting tonight talking about fatherhood. Yes, Lord. We've been talking about sonship. Mm -hmm. Which came first, sonship or fatherhood? Fatherhood or sonship? Um, the little rhyme, which came first? The chicken or the egg? The chicken egg. or the egg? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the egg or the chicken or the chicken? Amen. You remember that, right? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Little okay. Bit. 
So we've talked about the sun, and let, let me enter into this teaching tonight yes. by summing up some things. I'm not going to review, but some highlights mm -hmm. that highlights what the Father does, what is in the mind of our Father. We are in a time of realignment mm -hmm. for the sake of getting perfect alignment. Something that the Lord spoke to me, uh, some prophetic things a while back, repositioning. God is repositioning us mm -hmm. for right position. Yes. When something is out of position, mm -hmm. there can be pain, there can be trouble. When a part of your body is out of alignment, I don't know if you ever- Out of joint. Uh, out of joint, something disjointed or um, something out of line, your, mm. your physical, Frame like a shoulder is out of line. Or yeah. foot. Yes. Guess what? It causes tremendous pain. Yes. Until it's straightened out. I've seen. That's right. Uh, I played sports before in school. I didn't play football, but it could happen. I've seen um, um, you know disjointedness, disjointedness take place. I've yeah. seen somebody have a uh, finger that's you know knocked out of place, the bone, and then the trainer or doctor takes it and then snaps it back in alignment. Yeah. And that's quick, but it hurts. But once it's back in alignment, it alleviates those pains, amen, yes. and those things that causes disorder. Yes. So God wants his body in order so that the body can properly function. Yes. And if the body is not functioning according to the mm -hmm. uh, order of God, guess what, sweetheart? Somebody suffers. That's right. Somebody is not getting what they need to get because of dysfunction. Yes. If we're not functional, we are in dysfunction. Yes. And we definitely believe that God's church, amen, is called to function and he's getting the order. He's realigning us for order, amen. And we have to take the pain. We have to yes. go through the, the, the uh, correction pain. Yes. So that see, we can see what God is doing mm -hmm. and not complain so that we can minister to those who are without the gate. Yes. So that the world can see how God's church really look looks, what it's supposed to look like. Yes. What it does, how it acts, amen. amen. And a demonstration of power. So one of the things I want to, to highlight is that the the, the relationship of, uh, of father and son in ministry is the foundation of all ministry. There can be no solid, no strong ministry if there's not a relationship of a father to a son. That's right. Because fathers bring identity, and you yes. heard me say that. Yes. Over and over and over again. Um, in the manifestation of this relationship in ministry, it reflects the relationship between who? God, the father, our father. Yes and his own son, Jesus. Jesus talked about what his father was to him. Yes. Jesus related and conveyed it because he wanted them to know, when you see me, you've seen the father. Yes. I do. Now here, here is uh, something, and I'm just gonna give you the scriptures again, because what happens, these are the basic principles that, that we've seen in relationships between the father and, and Jesus and Jesus and his disciples. And of course, we talked about Paul and Timothy. Yes. Uh, we could talk about- um, Elijah and Elisha. Elijah and Elisha. Yes. That was one of the most powerful, amen, examples. That's because true. it was after Elijah, mm -hmm. the prophet in residence, mm -hmm. um, who had Elisha as his understudy, mm -hmm. studying under him. Yes. And the understudy, fulfills the role of the lead character. Yes. He's serving. I've said this, and I want to say it again, to those of you who desire and aspire to be great in ministry and in the Lord, you are anointed as David was, as Elisha was, yes. while serving. That's right. Anointed, somebody need to put that there. We are anointed while serving. That's right. That's when you know, you begin to serve who God has placed you with. Yes. Who is your father, who is your covering father. And you begin to learn the ways of your father. Yes. And while you're serving, that tells whether you qualify 
to move from the place of a servant yes. to a leader yourself. That's right. Amen. Remember the stage is infant, yes. childhood. Yes. Come on. And then become those who take responsibility and become a fully mature son. Yes. And then from a fully mature son, where, where is there left to go? The, the mature son sets the standard. He's not always a son. He becomes a father himself. Yes. Is that right? And then it starts over. It starts over again. We're fathers. I, yes. I've come into the place that I've fathered. I've been fathering for some years now. Mm -hmm. Amen. God has placed people in my life, uh, uh, in my Amen. And my responsibility to watch for their souls. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, and some watching, that's pastor to sheep. Yes. But then some, God actually called me to father them to the next dimension of ministry. Yes. And recognize the fact that God had called me. He sent Elijah to Elisha to go to his house. Yes. For and said, go put your, for ministry, go put your mantle on him. Now, there were other prophets in the school of the prophets. Yes. He didn't send him to anybody else's house. No. Not everybody qualified to be on that next level. You're about to say so. Oh, yes. Now, you call many people, um, many sons, you call, and you cover them in different ways. You, yeah. you Some you call sons and daughters, and but they're not really uh, sons of ministry. Right. Or sons or daughters of ministry. Mm -hmm. They're just um, those who need a, a father figure in their life or a, a father, uh, someone who needs mentoring as a father, not so much in ministry, but just in life. Yes. But then you have some who are in ministry, who that's what um, you are a spiritual father to them and you speak into their life yes. and you um, shape and, and try to guide them and correct them and bring them into who they're called to be. Now that's something totally different because I know there's some that you call son and some that you call daughter, but they're, they're not sons and daughters in ministry. Some that we just shepherd. Right. Remember, I will give you uh, pastors or shepherds. Yes. Is another word. Yes. Who will um, uh, feed you after my own art. Yes. Who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And the shepherd never wants to see the sheep go astray. He's responsible for the care. It's called pastoral care. That's right. Amen. There are those that we would care for under the pastorate that are not necessarily sons in ministry. Amen. 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 So Amen. we're responsible for that. So in ministry, yes, this is very important. Now let me say this. Um, the shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Mm -hmm. The shepherd in the sense is the father because he's fathering, covering all of those that are assigned to his care. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. So we have to understand that it's important to follow. Yes. To follow. Amen. Amen. That's foundational. Amen. 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 Um, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to make a big, big statement I've made before. Okay. Uh, Precentenarians, I don't know if you remember it, but it was during the time when I was teaching, and we're going into that now. In our morning services, we've been teaching on uh, uh, going from one place to another where we're on our way to. Yes. And when they were called to go into the promised land, yes. the evil report came back. That's right. God had given the instructions to the leader yes. as to what they were to do. Yes. Come on, now God always speaks to the leader. Yes. He doesn't speak from underneath. Come on, somebody. That's right. Amen. Unless the leader is in error, and then God still protects his order. He won't let anybody rebuke a leader. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. But uh, I said this, that many, some, when the report came back, there are times when we dismiss ourselves. They made excuses for not wanting to go into the promised land. Mm -hmm. When God had already told Moses, you know, send spies over there. He didn't have to do that. Send spies. And here is the instruction of God, our father, coming down to his servant, Amen. His son in the earth, Moses, uh, his leader in the earth, Moses, to lead them. Sent the spies, amen, amen, to see the land. And they came back and brought true statements back. Yes. About it is a good land. It is a land, just like he said, flowing with milk and honey. But the butt syndrome got started. Mm -hmm. But there were giants over there. Yes. Excuses were made. Obstacles. And excuses are divine or demonic, not divine. Excuses are a demonic mm -hmm. implant. Mm -hmm. Who planted those thoughts in their head? The enemy did. That's Amen. Right. Amen. But but what I'm getting to, 
is that they dismiss or excuse themselves from going in. Yes. And sometimes when we excuse ourselves from certain things that God has given, what we we disconnect. Yes. So we won't, here's the statement, you won't believe in what you dismiss yourself from. That's right. You won't believe in what you excuse yourself from. That's it. If you dismiss yourself from the instructions of a father, if you if you dismiss yourself from the instructions of a father, like the prodigal son did, yes. trouble came to his life. Oh yes, because he excused himself. And sometimes when we excuse ourselves and dismiss ourselves, the enemy will start justifying. Well, you know, nobody would blame you if you don't go in because others have tried it and failed. Yes. Come on. Well, nobody will, don't, won't blame you if you don't do this because your schedule is so hectic. Nobody would. No, we have to understand fathers' coverings are for our protection. Yes. Coverings, covering fathers, covering shepherds are for our protection. Yes. Yes. I wanted to just bring out one point. Um, God told Moses to uh, send, uh, let them send the spies in. But don't you know, they had asked Moses, could they send in the spies? And God told him, go ahead and let them send them in. Satisfied them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wanted to, they weren't satisfied with God's report alone. They needed their own report. That is a dangerous thing when yes. God has already spoken what is, and then you still want to go and scout out the land to verify God's story. Which means you're looking for a different way. And, other and, than God's and you way. and you may and you don't fully believe what God said. Uh -huh. There's unbelief. There. Yes, so exactly. I just wanted to bring that point out. So then if we are talking about fathers, so fathers did what? They sent their sons into ministry because they know when the son is ready that's right to be set up they know also when he is not ready that's right amen it's not based on how that son can articulate no he may look like he, you know, he may have grown in some phases yep of ministry and understanding yes but he's not ready to go out so fathers sent sons in the ministry uh jesus is sent by the father we get that from john 7 and the disciples were sent into the world by uh, as as the father sent the son by Jesus, Jesus sent them into ministry. He said, "Go, that's right. Preach the gospel. That's it." He said, "Go, go teach it." Mm -hmm. What he said, "Go preaching the gospel yes. to every man, every creature." And he told them how they're to do it, what they're to do. So fathers confirm. Mm -hmm. Why do we need fathers? Fathers bring confirmation yes. related to, to your calling. Somebody should know that God has called you to ministry other than yourself. Mm -hmm. In other words, a father confirms as a witness. He is or That's she good. is who she says she is. Amen. Let me just say what he is because you uh, female sons. Amen. That's right. He is who he says he is. And they give a rousing, a ringing endorsement. We can trust the God in them. Yes. We can trust them to be who they are called to be because they have watched. Yes. Fathers watch their sons. Yes, they do. Sons watch the fathers. Yes. But the sons are given an opportunity to grow in ministry by their fathers. Isn't That's that right. good? It's good. Amen. So fathers bear witness. Amen. John 5, 37. We got to test that, sweetheart. And uh, John 8 and 17 through 18, the father bears witness and confirms the sin date. Who sent him? I did. We hear all through, the. Uh, we see it in the New Testament where Jesus on a couple of occasions when uh, uh, somebody about to get out of order or God, God just giving his approval. Yep. When he came out of the water, just baptism. This is my beloved son. Yes. And who am I? Am well pleased. That was a heavenly endorsement. Yes. Heaven touched earth. Yes. Woo! A voice came out. Would have loved to have been there. Uh, an audible voice came out of the heavens. Yes. And Jesus is coming straight way up out of the water. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Letting the earth know my son is here. And he has my full endorsement, my full support, yes. my full power. Ooh, yes. glory to God. He's everything that I am. Yes. Come on. And if you want to see me, look at him. Yes. 
yes. engage him. And then when the uh, they're on the Mount of Transfiguration, yes. now here comes an attempt by somebody under, under leaders, under shepherds, uh, they're under the leadership of Jesus. Amen. The disciples, some yes. of them with him, and they, they, they're they breaching the order. Oh, you know, that's... Not they, just one of them. Just one of them. <laughs> and he saw the images uh, of those who were released. Uh, let's build three tabernacles. One for uh, Moses. Yes, one for Elijah. Elijah. And yes. then one for Jesus. And one for Jesus. And the Lord, the Lord had to, I don't know if he gave a thunderclap or not, but he had to speak out of heaven. Yeah. He said, this is my beloved son. I'm about Jesus. Yes. Hear ye him. Yes. Follow him. That's right. Because what Peter was doing when he was saying that, he was putting Jesus on the same level as Moses and Elijah. And God, him, the father said, no, he's more than a prophet. They were prophets. He's my son. He's my son. He's my only begotten mm -hmm. son. So he is not equal with Moses and Elijah. Yeah. Very important. And realize the order. Yes. Realize where you are and who you are. Now they was he was zealous. Yes. You know sometimes people can be zealous and you may have good intentions, but it's not the right order. Yes. God always is going to fit into order. He's the one who established it. Yes. He's not going to work where there's a breach in in the order. Come on. Yes. He's not going to work uh, for the son in ministry. Uh, to speak or witness him, witness of himself, speak of himself. He should never yes. speak of himself. Yes. The son in ministry should never come on. That's right. Bear witness of himself. Yes. I am this, and I'm you know as if he called himself. Right. Come on. That's why you have to watch, watch, accepting the accolades of people. So true. Watch it when people start to lift you up. Amen. Yes, amen. And you begin to acknowledge what they say about you. Yes. You don't bear witness of yourself because no. to do so to do so it breaches. Amen. Yes. It breaches the order of God. Makes a breach. Come on. All right. Amen. It's, it's, it causes things to come apart. It causes the disfavor of God yes. when we speak of ourselves. Yes. And I believe this statement I just made is sounding the alarm that we need a lot more humility in ministry. Yes. We need to humble ourselves. That's very true. Amen. For God resists the proud. Yes. But what does he do? He yes. elevates. Yes. He, come on. He lifts up. Yes. Come on. He exalts. Yes. That humble. which is humble. That's right. The way to go up is to go down. That's right. The way to go up is to submit yourself yes. to the powers that be, the authority that God has set over yes. and you. And that's why one of the reasons we need fathers and what fathers do. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping you're getting, you get your notes in the, in the order. Uh, I'm not giving you a particular order of everything that a father does, but everything you I say that a father does, you need to have that in your notes. Yes. I'll go back and listen to it. One thing a father does is love. Yes. Father loves his son. Yes. No matter what that son has done or will do. We saw that in the, in the parable yes. of the prodigal son. Yes. His daddy was waiting on him, looking for him every day, yes. missing that boy because he loved his son. And a father will always love his son. Yes. He loves him. He yes. wants him to be in right order. But he must understand the son must never bear witness of himself. All right, let's continue with the reading then. Let's start that reading on, um, what did I ask for? John 5, 38. John 5, 37. Oh, 37. In 37 and 30, yeah, 5, 37. And John 8, 17 through 18. Okay. John 5, 37. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, mm. hath borne witness of me. Yes. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Whoa. He bears witness of me. So even though you've never heard his voice mm -hmm. or seen his shape, I'm his image. I am in his image. Yes. If, if you hear my voice, you heard the Father's voice. Isn't that powerful? Yes. I am a representation. Remember, 
God is looking for that corporate son. Yes. Remember, the mature son is the full representation, which he's mature, of his father. Yes. Jesus was the full manifestation. Not even one other folk. That's right. He was the full manifestation of his father yes. in the earth. And yes. when, when he left the earth, that's right. Come on. We're to do greater things. Yes. And he, and he said, upon this rock, yes. I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not uh, prevail against it. That that the church is to be the corporate son representing the full will carry us. Come on. Yes. We should look yes. like God, our Father. Amen. When he placed Adam in the garden, he was, uh, what's that word? Tishnam in the Hebrew, in the image icon mm -hmm. yes when he was set in the earth he was god's man that had the image of god let us make man in our own image yes and in our likeness in the similitude of the light and let's come on and give him authority yes in the earth he will have dominion he will spread out and that's what adam was assigned to do yes. he's he's god's image in the earth yes that's what God is bringing a realignment so that the church can be that son that we represent. We're going forth as one new man. We're yes. going forth as one corporate son. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And when you sing the song, and this is, and then what when we have this going on, you're talking about all kinds of endorsement. We're gonna see supernatural occurrences. Yes. Super I, I believe it's not beyond God to speak up beyond God now. To speak as he did audibly out of heaven. Yes. Heaven touching earth. Yes. Signs and wonders because yes. we are representing him in fullness. That's right. Glory to God. Amen. All right. So 8 and 17 now. St. John 8 and 17. The fathers confirm their sons in their ministries. It's dangerous, amen, to uh, embrace an unconfirmed minister yes lord i said it and i want to stand by yes leaders pastors of our churches we want to make sure yes when we allow people to minister to the people that god has called you to be caretakers over make sure their ministries are confirmed by someone you know when i, I came up in a day in, in holiness where uh when somebody said i'd love to preach at your church Pastors did some homework. Hey, mm -hmm. that's right. They did some checking up. Amen. They Amen. did some calling. Out. Okay, they, the first thing they want to do. Okay, who are you? Where you come from? Yeah. Come on. Who who knows you? You have a spiritual father. You have a spiritual covering. Who can endorse you? That says that you are uh, acceptable to minister in this place. You're sounding your teaching. Amen. Sound is solid. Yes. Amen. Not flaky. Not te teaching an erroneous doctrine. Mm -hmm. Not an error. Yes. Come on. And because guess what? There have been many yes. who have gone out without a spiritual father. Yes. Without an identity. Yes. And they become orphan, orphan ministers, orphan yes. children. Yes. People who are outside without a father and they minister pain and hurt. Many yes. times you can listen to people when they minister and tell if they're not over a pain or hurt. Come on. Yes. Uh, if they've been rejected, if some some may have been dropped by a ministry, a so-called father, somebody they thought should have been their father, it may have been dropped. Some may have been dropped as the midwife dropped Mephibosheth yes. and he was crippled in his feet. Mm -hmm. Some some ministry may be barren in the producing of spiritual fruit. Amen. Amen. There may not be the healing, may not be the identification there. Come on, because you have put your mouth on somebody else's ministry. Yeah. I taught that, you know, we, we must not put our mouth on other men's and women's ministry because we can become barren as David's wife, That's Come right. on, Michelle did. Yes. She criticized the man of God right. because he did something that pleased God. Yes. Dancing before the Lord. Yes. And the Bible said that God made her barren in her womb. Yes. That she would never have a little David. Yes. Never have a child by David because she put her mouth yes. on the man of God. So what we're allowing into our ministries. Yes. When we allow different people to come in to speak. Come on. 
And that's the one thing I always have tried to convey to any sons that I have covered as a spiritual father. Yes. You want to make sure, you want to make sure you go, you're going into the house of somebody else who has care for those members. Come that's on. That's right. Any revelation you have, yes. you want to make sure that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, it's been established. That's right. Because if it's not established and it's unchecked, then you're not to release it. That's right. Because it may be in error. That's right. Come on, somebody. That's right. Well, God wanted that to be said. Yes, evidently. he did. And even while you're talking about not allowing just anybody to come in and minister, just because they, they said, hey, I'd like to come minister to your yeah. church. They may be wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen. They may be um, uh, coming to ravish your sheep and you have no idea that until the end of the thing, because you've talked about one time before how there was uh, one person that allowed someone to come in because they had heard about how the person could um, raise money, so forth and so on, and came and ravished, uh, ravished the sheep and even called some to go away from the ministry. Where, where God had set them. Yes. Come on. You don't know. Leave that father. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes it can be dangerous letting someone in without knowing who they are, without knowing that they are confirmed by someone else who is a father in the spirit. What did I say recently? Who, who has your ear? Come on. The, the people listen more to the spies that have a negative report than listen to their leaders. Yes. Come on. You, you need to, who you, who you listen to the most has your ear. Yes. Has your faith. Let me put it there. They yes. put faith, the people back in the camp, put faith in the ones who brought back a negative report. Yes. They didn't let, they didn't want it. They wiped out what God had said. Yes. I'm giving you a land that's flowing with milk and honey. This is your uh, destiny. Yes. And they, they they lost out on their destiny. They lost out on their inheritance because they were listening to the wrong people. Yes. Oh, So God. they died out in the wilderness. Died in the wilderness. And those that were under 20 and under, they went in because they did not enter into unbelief right. as the older ones did. They entered into the rest, into the promise. The only ones over 20 that went in were Caleb and, and Joshua, Joshua, the leader. The leaders yes. that began, to, you know, who was it? Caleb said, you know, he, he felt like he was just as young as the others. I feel like a young man. I feel like I'm in my 20s again. But he said, give us this mountain. Yes. We're able to go in and do it. But the problem is yes. when there is no endorsement yes. of a particular ministry, yes. there's no father. And yet the spiritual father may be going on. Yes. But then somebody still should know you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Gifts and callings are without repentance. Yes. Uh, which means they're irrevocable. They're people who are operating in gifts. Yes. Come on. That's right. But they may be in error. They may not come on be endorsed by some, you know, we can get caught up in gifts and, and come on, sure. signs and wonders. That's right. We need to know more than the fact that they work signs and they do wonders. You're sure right about that. God protects his people. Yes, he does. And while you were <coughs> talking about um, father and son and confirmation, remember how Moses confirmed Joshua just before he died mm. in the sight of the people yes. to give him an endorsement. Remember how God would um, use so many different ones to confirm. Remember when David was about to die and there was um, one of the um, sons was trying to usurp authority. And then the mother of Solomon said, listen, I need you to lay your hands on him. She went to the prophet and the prophet said, Nathan. yes, the prophet Nathan, you need an endorsement. That's what's going to come. So this is what you do. You oh, ride him mm -hmm. in. So it was a confirmation. Confirmation. He was confirmed to be the next leader. Put him on his daddy's beast. That's right. Ride him around the city. Yes. Come on. And uh, people begin to gather. Amen. Yes. That was an endorsement. Yes. By amen of the God's prophet. Yes. And said God's going to endorse him. Yes. Come on, and he's the one. Yes. No matter what. So confirm. That, that confirm. That's a con we can stamp that across the screen. Confirm. 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 That's right. That means endorsed. This is the one. He's the one. She's the one. Now, why are we saying all this? Because fathers 
Still today, that order hadn't changed. Yes. Remember realignment for proper alignment? Yes. Repositioning for right position. Yes. Amen. Fathers send sons out to minister. Yes. Be anxious for nothing. Yes. Be anxious for nothing. Yes. Now, fatherhood is ordained of God. Yes. It is not something that God ordained. Listen, who am I talking to tonight? It is not something that God ordained to stifle your ministry. That's right. You're called to the ministry. Come on. You, you need to be tutored. You need to be guided. Come on. You need to be trained and led. Amen. Yes. I will give you fathers. Yes. I'm going to give you shepherds. Yes. Glory to God. After Elijah was caught up in that whirlwind, yes. the first thing that came out of Elisha's mouth, he knew it. He knew it in that transitional moment. Yes. He knew that when the man he had served, his anointing came while serving. Yes. His purpose was, was realized while he was serving someone greater than himself. Yes. And we have to watch it when the enemy begins to use scriptures with us yes. and try to quote scriptures to us. Mm. He did it with Jesus in the way. That's right. But I like what you said and how that, you know, the difference was when he was a uh, tempting Jesus in the wilderness. And here the enemy want to tell a lot of us, I know my, I know more than my teachers. Yeah. I'm more anointed. I know more than my teachers. But let me tell you something. God gives oversight. Yes. God gives oversight. That's why he had the presbytery yes. at Antioch. There were apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and God spoke through the, the the presbytery to give oversight into what? Mm -hmm. The apostles have oversight. The prophets have insight. Yes. They see in. The apostles can see, but they have oversight. They're first in order. And pastors in the congregation are the ones who have oversight. Yes. It says in Hebrews, sweetheart, yes. Yes. find it for me. It says, uh, uh, obey them, submit to them. Oh, yes. That yes, have 13. rule 13 and 6 7. For they have, they watch for your souls. Yes. They watch. Oh, I thank God for spiritual fathers in my life. Yes. And I haven't even got to my base scripture, but I wanted to, Holy Spirit to start it this way and to remind that what came even through the sonship teaching, yes. what fathers do for sons. Yes. We can't, we can't get around it. Uh, 13, what does it say? 7, 17, mm -hmm. excuse me. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, and mm -hmm. they must give an account that they may do it with joy, not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. A wise son in progress makes a what kind of father? Glad. A glad father. A glad and father. notice what he says here, that they may do it with joy. With joy, Amen. not with grief. With Not with grief. They want to lead. They want to guide you with joy. Yes. They want to be able to sit back and say, look at what, look at how my son has grown. Yes. Uh, the greatest compliment I've ever had, the greatest compliment that I could even receive, sweetheart, and you've been in the presence of something that made me smile. We were out of state. You know, uh, you, all, you all and different members have traveled, Sister Geraldine, Sister mm -hmm. Julie, mm -hmm. have been others who have been here. They're in other states now uh, serving uh, amen. They traveled with me and I wanted to do that for a purpose, to let them see the ministry as God sends us in different places yes. and then let them minister along with me. Yes. When I have trusted the anointing and the teachings that God had given to them through me. Yes. Amen. The greatest compliment I could ever receive and to me to this day is not that you are so anointed to preach. You are so anointed to teach all you brought. You. No, 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 none of that. Come on, uh, you you did something. I don't I don't I don't deal with that. Come on, okay. the thing that blesses me is to see you grow. Yes. That have served unto me. That I poured uh, into you. Amen. Yes. That I've helped you find out who you are in Christ. Yes. Not that you are a clone of me, That's but right. some traits are there. But to help you find out who you are in Christ. Yes. Amen. For Amen. For, for me to see you grow, somebody. To say, oh, you have taught your people well. You remember that? Yes. We were in the Phoenix, Phoenix Mesa, Arizona area, and there was a bishop there. And you remember? I'll let you tell it. She, oh, yeah. you know, uh, you know. Well, she observed the, the the members who were with me. Yes. And she and I 
or riding, uh, Alma Bear was taking us back to the hotel. Yes. And she spoke to me. She was in the front. I was in the back. She yes. said, she said, Apostle Deloach, I sense that you have taught your people very well. I have observed them in this conference and they did some things for her. Yes. They noticed her. Amen. Yes. First of all, um, when the Alma Bear was coming to pick us up from the hotel, um, the bishop, she was sitting in the front seat and the um, member, other member of myself, we were sitting in the back seat. We were not cackling. We were not loud because we That's realized it, even talk. though she may not be preaching tonight, God may be still speaking to respect her. So we want to respect the anointing. So we were quiet and then and we weren't engaging her. We weren't asking her a bunch of questions. If we, uh, she wanted to talk to us, she did ask us how we were doing. Mm -hmm. We didn't try to go on with the conversation, but um, we just, we did not engage her. We waited for her to engage us Amen. and we stayed respectful. And then in the serve before the service began i noticed that she was coughing and i kept looking around for someone to come and bring her water so then i had some um cough drops in my purse and i, I came up to her on the side of her and asked would you like a cough drop she said thank you so much and so then the thing you had taught us to do is to watch yes is to be watchful in we can in the service I, I constantly have watched my leader. He has been able to get my attention, not 100% of the time, <laughs> most of the but time. most of the time, 90% of the time, he's able to get my attention because I'm watching him. I'm not looking around. I'm not looking down. I'm mm -hmm. watching him to see what is needed. And so because I learned that in the ministry, it carried over when we went to other places. Yes. And that's why. She said that, I, I said, say, you have trained your people. Well, you, yes. And watching the flow of the service. Yes. Watching the flow of those who are up, watching yes. everything. Yes. Amen. Paying attention. Yes. And to me, that was the greatest compliment I'd ever received. Mm. You know, and in my heart, I said, thank you, Lord. Help me to continue to be responsible to train and to teach your people to grow up, to mature. be mature yes. sons in ministry. That's Amen. Right. That Amen. can be a blessing to somebody else. This That's is right. good. Did we stop on the scripture? Amen. Well, so then the father loves. Okay. The father confirms the, the son in ministry. Yes. Gives confirmation. Johnny. And that's so important. 8, mm -hmm. 17 and 18. Yes. It, uh, excuse me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself and the father that sent me beareth witness of me. Mm, mother, Jesus bore witness as to who he was. I'm, I'm the son father. of God. I'm the son of God. And his father agreed. He is Ooh, the son of God. He is who he says he is. Yes. I'm an apostle. Who's confirmed that? Oh. Who's seen that? Who even knows what it is to say that that's what it is? Mm -hmm. Somebody of apostolic rank. Yes. Someone who is a part of presbytery. Yes. Someone who understands that anointing and can go to the book. Yes. Go to the Come profile on. that profiles you as a an apostle right. or a prophet. How do prophets act? Woo! Thank God for those who have written books on what a prophet is and what a prophet looks like yes. and what an apostle is and what yes. an apostle yes. does. That's the main thing. Amen. Are we doing? Come on. I come on. What's it work? Um, doing the works of him, of him that sent me. That's it. While it is day. Yes. Come on. Yes. I will do the works of him that sent me. Doing the Father's works. Yes. That's what Jesus did. That's he right. manifested his Father. Yes. He didn't come talking about himself. No. He came yes. talking about his Father because yes. that's the order which came first. The Father, the Father. sent the Son. Yes. Amen. The Father birthed the Son. That's right. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. That, there's something called the law of the primogenitor. Amen. Amen. The primogenitor is a first parent or earliest ancestor. 
who passes down an inheritance down to someone else in the family called a progenitor. Yes. The progenitor is the descendant of the primogenitor. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the first parents in earth were Adam and Eve. Yes. Amen. Amen. So they were uh, like the primogenitors for the earth. If there were fathers in our, in my family yes. who received an anointing from God and passed it down, and I'm receiving, so I don't know, um, my God, I think there was way down the line somewhere uh, some preachers in my family. Well, now I'm a descendant yes. of what had happened many years ago. Yes. And that progenitor was required yes. to be greater than the father. Yes. Learn from the father and yes. look, look, look at that. Look at that process. Mm -hmm. Look at how it works. Look at the order. Elijah, Elisha yes. not only got the portion of what his predecessor, yes. his spiritual father had, yes. he got double. Yes. Because he was required to do more. Yes. And it when when his father was caught up, they were no blood relationship. Yes. But he knew. That had been his spiritual father. That's right. He said he looked up and said, "My father, yes, my father, yes, the chariots, mm -hmm. ooh, the chariots of God had come to pick." He looked up and the mantle dropped back down to the earth to endorse, yes, that this is my son. He, yes, endorsed the fact that I'm a prophet. That's right. He. He confirmed it. He released this inheritance. Yes. On my behalf. He yes. stood before the Father. He said, I can't give it to you. Yes. But if you be here. Yes. Uh, he confirmed it. He, the so fact that he had that mantle was a confirmation. It was a confirmation. And, and, and before he came, he said, if you be here, Elijah understood the anointing and mantles are given to servants. Yes. Who serve under. Yes. How many, oh, somebody need to praise the Lord with us tonight. Everything I've received from the Lord spiritually, it came through serving. Yes. I've served my pastor faithfully. As I was growing up, my mother taught us, you faithfully serve in your local ministry mm -hmm. and you serve your leader. Yes. And when, when my pastor would come to my mother as I'm growing in my teenage years, because I need I need him to go with me. Yeah. You know, I was a musician. I need him. And it got to the point, it was more than just, you know, with music. Sometimes he couldn't be in the same place, several places at one time. He said, I need him to go and represent for me. One time he said, I don't need you to do nothing, but just go. When they call my name, I want you to stand up and represent me. And don't stay, don't, don't talk low. <laughs> yes. He said, I want you to take my seed offering, take my offering. I can't be there, but don't talk long. And then, you know, I obey. So because yes. he would have heard I got up there took 30 minutes, and, and, and here I am just a just a son. Yes. Here I am as somebody that don't know what he knows, what yes. my father knows, yes. and bear and bore the people and try to act like I'm so anointed, try to act like I'm so <laughs> spiritual. Oh, the Lord gave me a word today. And you know, back in those days. Oh, he probably wouldn't have to they wear much. Sit you down. They would pull your coat down oh, and yeah. say, sit down. You are out of order. Yes. I, I don't know if today's the group could take such stern uh, correction. Rebuke. Rebuke. Rebuke them openly. The Rebuke says. with all that, long suffering. That others what, may fear. That others may fear. Come on. And when he said this, he said first, you know, that when we profit, he meant to let our profiting appear yes. to all men. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our profiting, our learning must appear. Amen. And remember, what you dismiss yourself from, you won't believe in. Okay. And people are dismissing themselves from this, this order of God, yes. and they're making shipwreck of the faith in other folks' lives. Yes. Amen. We've yes. got a whole lot out here for you to watch on the internet. Thank God for the platform. But you have pastors. Yes. You have leaders that God has come on sent and given to you according to his what own heart his own heart to feed you with knowledge and with understanding yes. but you come with somebody else has you here so we got to understand that anointing is endorsed that calling is endorsed it by is. a spiritual father and i'm glad i had 
some fathers oh, in yes. my life. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, um, a lot of, we're still talking a lot about sonship, father um, yeah. relationship, but fathers, listen, fathers, mm. remember Abraham had no seed. He didn't ask God for stuff. He asked God for a son. Son. He asked him for a son because he wanted someone to lead His the stuff to. You have men, men of God, please hear me. You are working. God has used you mightily. He has brought um, wrought many things through your ministry, but you won't be here always. Mm -hmm. And the, when you become mature, oh, you God. start looking around. Hopefully you don't wait till you're like 80 years old to start looking around and say, who can I leave it to? Then it's too late for you to try to train mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. Fathers, this is start asking God for sons. Start asking God for sons. sons. Many times mm -hmm. we're asking for buildings. We're asking for finances. For sure. We're asking for people mm -hmm. to come and help undergird the ministry. We need all of those things, but we need sons. We need someone to leave it to. Yeah. We need somebody who's going to perpetuate it. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, it was Elijah that was in the cave, and he's like, oh, God, I'm the only one. I'm the I'm, only, I'm one. only one left of the prophets, and God Jezebel said, and she's trying to kill me. I'm the last prophet God mm -hmm. said there's 7,000 that have about a need of bail mm -hmm. you already know what it says but also he began to give him an instruction glory yeah. to God he sent him to get three men oh I know which, where you about yes to indeed go back the way you came Come on. and he told and him on your way yes and on your way who's the first person he said go get we got to find it we release your anointing. Yes. Amen. So Jehu is one Jehu, of them. Hazel. Hazel. And then the last one is Elisha, Elisha who shall be prophet in, in our, your room. In your place. In your stead. In so your stead. Yes. go and get your son to perpetuate your ministry. You need Ooh. a son. I'm praying some pastors need to, I hope, you know, we may not can see you. I'm, we're going to hang here out a few minutes longer. I believe God wants some leaders to be on the line. Fa because yes. there's a dilemma. Yes. What's the father's dilemma? The dilemma today, What? who's going to handle the vision after you? Yes. And sometimes there has been misappropriation of the anointing. Yes. And to think that maybe it's always our blood sons. Oh, yes. It's not always our blood sons no. who are called to step into position where you currently are. Yes. Amen. And it, 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 it is not a, come on, a thing of nepotism. No. It's not a thing where, okay, you know, this is, come on, this is my kingdom. No, we ain't building our kingdom. No. We're building God's kingdom. That's it. And it may be, I, come on, I, I have a friend, and I don't call any names. Raised up a powerful church there uh, in the city, in the state where he is. And we've been friends for years. He was part of a major move of God. And he served the man of God. But when he came time, he didn't start the church until he had the endorsement from his leader. There you go. But recently, we talked a few years ago. And let me tell you something. He knew. Oh, I hear you, God. I think you're talking to me. He, You know, his blood son didn't receive, come on, the mantle. There was a young man that he said that it served in the ministry. He knew, mm -hmm. he knew that he was called. And this mm -hmm. is a good friend of mine, was called. And, and, and he told me, he said, I'm releasing, legacy is here. I'm releasing it to this young man. Mm -hmm. And that young man has made, has grown that church. Exponentially. Exponentially. And I'm gonna say Michael Todd, I gotta say, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Bishop, he often refers to my friend, Bishop Gary McIntosh. As his, his spiritual, spiritual father. father. And, and Bishop Gary has been my friend for years. I brought him to Arkansas years ago. But he told me, he, I said, he said, I'm releasing over. He said, and I know everything he said I'm asking him to do, he's done it well. Yes. Whether it was a, a menial task, media or whether ministry, media over the youth, over the youth, he said he's excelled in every one. Yes, of, but we have to not misappropriate the anointing yes. that God has given. We have to watch to see who qualifies. That's it. Not the one with the most elegant voice. Not the one who who has a set of clothes and suit of clothes that looks better. Come on, and it, whoa, that's in our teaching too. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah, it says in the in, in a certain day that's coming. There are going to be people who wanted leaders and give us clothes. Give us, give us somebody who has clothes. Seven women are going to take hold to one man and say, give us your name. 
Give us your identity. There are people out there who are grasping and want to associate with somebody, but it's got to be the right order of God. It's got to be the right one. It has to be the right one. Mm -hmm. And look at the pattern according to scripture. Now, I'm not saying this is always, but look at the pattern. You remember Eli in the temple. Wow. Eli, the same one that made fun of Hannah, the same one mm -hmm. that was the uh, spiritual father yeah. to Samuel, the same one. Mm -hmm. Listen, his sons were running um, amok. Uh, and even before we get to Eli, look at Aaron and his sons, mm -hmm. how his yes. sons were um, offering up strange fire because they had not been authorized. Look at how the sons, a lot of times, mm -hmm. even they had a father who was well known, but the sons were running them up. Look at Samuel's sons, yes. the prophet Samuel. Even when Samuel's sons, when they were set as judges, mm -hmm. they like, no, your sons, they, they don't act right. They're taking money. They're they taking no, yeah, we don't want them over us. We'd rather have a king over us. We don't want your sons. Mm -hmm. You've been righteous, yeah, but not That's your right. sons. So, yes. Wow. So, listen, look at the pattern. It didn't always fall that way, mm -hmm. but look at the pattern of scripture. Solomon did some wonderful things. He built the house of God, but look at what happened. Look at David's other sons. Look at um, what was the one who got the big head because he was so handsome? Absalom. 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 And it says in the word how uh, now David, he really trying to send him out because he loved him. And the word said he loved him too much. He loved him more Ooh, than he should have. And got yeah. him in trouble. So this is why we yeah. can't. Say, well, just because my son or just because my daughter is a minister, this was the one that's going to take it over, that's going to take over the ministry. You better seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. That was a part of David's judgment. Yes. And that's all I said about that, that there was going to be disorder in his household because of some of his own sins. Yes. But he loved that son too much. Yes. And murder was committed and all kind of stuff yeah. ran through his family. Yeah. But I was laughing because you sound like some older aged people, they were running amok. Yeah. Oh, right. What <laughs> Tell them what you mean by this. Somebody said, I don't know that word. So that word is a muck. Yeah, they were they were in error. They were and, messing and, up and royally. Messing up royally. And, yes. up. and it, it, in uh, Eli's sons, they were taking the fat portions of the offerings and having their way with the women. Amen. So they could not be the, the inheritors of that inheritance. And even Eli had gotten to the point as a priest. He couldn't even hear the voice of God anymore. No. Come on. Because of... Because he would not, listen to this, he, mm, he refused to judge, to his, judge sons. his own sons. That's right. His own blood sons. Yes. And God stripped him of the pleasure and the privilege of hearing God's voice. Yes, and ere the light, uh, uh, the lamp went out and in the air, temple. Which means before the light went out in the temple, yes. God had to raise up Same. a baby Child, child, child Samuel, child Samuel, and prepared him to be come on so to speak to Israel. So it wasn't Samuel's sons; it was his spiritual son. Excuse me; it wasn't Eli's sons; it was his spiritual son Samuel. So we have to be. But so fathers, that, again, yeah. we're praying. Start praying and asking God for sons. Start asking for sons, someone who can take it over. Elisha had a, a, a spiritual understudy, if you would, but he wasn't the right one. Not the right one. And it's very important. Yes. And then even as fathers of families, yes. we have to watch. They, we watch them. They watch in the Bible. They watch the child from its uh, first coming out of the womb mm -hmm. to watch their tendencies. Yes. To watch their mannerisms, yes, even before naming them, yes, and it was important to give them spiritual, godly names, yes, um, consistent with their characteristics, yes, in which their characteristics characteristics begin to reflect God's purpose, yes, right, really in their lives, right, Amen, Amen. Uh, I've got a man child from the Lord, yes, Eve said, "You bore." Uh, came a man mm -hmm. from the Lord. Yes. Uh, and then when she had uh, the next child, uh, 
Abel mm -hmm. named him transitory or transitoriness, which meant he's not going to live long. Yes. He won't be. Look at how prophetic that was. He's, he's going to transition. He's going to transition mm. out of here. Wow. He And they didn't know how. No. But they observed and they were led to name him that, yeah. you know, the story, he would be killed by his brother. Right. So this thing is so important. This order, this order that God has put in place. Yes. Man didn't put, pastors didn't put that in place. Yes. Denominations didn't put this in place. Yes. This is from God himself okay yes, the son so then he has witness born of him the flow of authority is is breached by that that action when he speaks of himself because whatever words or actions a ministry does to place itself or exalt itself into a certain position is not in order that's right whatever a ministry does to place itself in certain position, uh, positions but what about that competitive spirit? Yes. That competitiveness in the body of Christ. Yes. You know, God sets men yes. in the body as it pleases. Him. As it pleases. That's first Corinthians 12. Uh, I believe 18. Let's confirm that. He sets men in the body as it pleases him, not as it pleases them. I always like to say that. He didn't set me in the body, you know, as it pleased me. He didn't ask me, Gary, what you want to do in the body? He didn't say, Gary, what you want to be? Which one of the fivefold ministry offices would do you want to stand in? Which one of the gifts do you want? He didn't say that to me. No. You know, he placed me in the body as it pleased him and wanted me to be there to serve and watched me faithfully to see what I would do. Come on. Place men in the body as it pleases him. So we have to understand that when we try to place ourselves, we breach the order. David ran into a situation where he had good intentions and in tried to bring the ark of the presence back to the holy city of God, but he breached the order. Good intentions versus due order. Now remember I said, what is God doing? He's bringing us back into proper alignment. Did you find it? Ah, uh, yes, Amen. verse 18. First, that's what I said, 1 Corinthians 12 and 18. Yes, Amen. but All now right. hath God set the members, mm -hmm. every one of them in the body, as it please, has pleased him. As it has pleased him. Yes, and while you were talking about we can't exalt ourselves or we can't put ourselves in a certain position, do you remember who tried to exalt himself? Do you remember who tried to put himself in a certain position? Lucifer. Lucifer. Mm -hmm. So anytime we do that and we don't have the father's confirmation of being exalted, that means that we're going under a Luciferian principle, mm -hmm. a satanic principle, satanic principle to try to exalt ourselves without the father um, putting honor on us. That's what they do. Mm. They, um, they're the ones that said they're ready. Receive them. We can't say I'm ready. He didn't. He don't understand that I'm ready. He can't see that I'm ready. So I just had to go out. We can't do that. Uh -uh. Honor has to be placed on us in order to be put and placed in a certain position. Amen. God respects and He's looking for honor. Yes. Malachi mm -hmm. one. Yes. If I be a father, a father, listen to God speaking through the, the prophet Malachi. If I be your father, where is what? Where's my, my honor? Honor. Yes. We're called to honor our fathers. Yes. And yeah. at, come on. And at a certain time, fathers will be, begin to bestow honor upon, upon their the sons, son. yes. just like Moses did Joshua, mm -hmm. put honor on him in front of the people, of the people, so that the people would honor him. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one, the father places honor on the mm -hmm. son. What did, Amen. what did he say in Joshua's reading in one uh, eight one in the first few verses? Even today, that it would read in the service. Yes. As I was with Moses, yes. Joshua. That's right. I'm going to be that same way with you. That's I'm right. going because you have served him. That's right. You have served him. You've been faithful. Yes. You didn't try to usurp 
his authority. That's right. Come on. You didn't try to uh, gather people to bring people uh, under your tutelage or feel like you knew more. You served. And everything I did for Moses, I'm going to be the same with you. That's I'm right. going to endorse you yes. with my power, That's signs, right. all kinds of things. Amen. Amen. And he he was endorsed. Yes. 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 And God did that through his leaders to show honor. Yes. So if I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be your a master, where is my fear? Mm -hmm. Where is my reverential fear or respect? They were bringing off things. They were bringing lame offerings, lame animals mm -hmm. to offer as the sacrifice and say, you know, this is going to honor the Lord. Not so. Yeah. Not so. You don't bring, because God required certain animals to be brought. They couldn't be lame. Right. They couldn't be blind. But it had to represent something from your heart, something that touched your life, something that you did in total respect of the one who you served. Yes. Oh, yes. Man. Amen. Oh, man. Amen. Well, we got about 12 more minutes, and let's close it out and get me get me into the segue to introduce. Amen. So then um, fathers, uh, the relationship of fathers and sons was reflected in the scripture. Well, we saw it. Okay. Uh, what the father, you know, the things... Um, that the father, the fathers watch, sons watch fathers, but fathers watch the sons. Yes. To know when they're ready. Yes. Fathers uh, also uh, listen to sons. John 14 and 9 through 12, uh, the sons imitate the father. Jesus imitated his father. Yes. Amen. And in the same regard, if um, the son is imitating the father, then the father must set the example. example remember standard. so that goes from that last teaching that you did mature you was a uh, mature son the one that sets the standard sets the see standard. now he's ready to be a father mm -hmm. because he can set the standard yes, and so now you you're uh, in being a father you have to be one that sets the standard you have to show them the right way you have to pull them aside and say now watch what happens during the service and you have to quiz them and question them after the service say, now what did you see and mm -hmm. what did you observe you have to be the example and teach them Go ahead. so god is bringing forth as he's bringing forth true sons that means he's bringing forth True fathers. Yes. To to train the sons. Yes. And you said something earlier about, uh, and I wanted to use the word, the father's dilemma. There are leaders today. Mm -hmm. uh, ministered in the convention some years ago in Kokomo, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave me a word about how long would it be before the vision comes to pass. Sure. No more waiting and no more delaying. God the vision uh, is here and the effect. In effect. Uh, um, something is here in the effect of every yes, vision. Yes, for the time in the effect. That's in Ezekiel 12. Yes. Go get it. And and the effect of every vision. And when I announce my text. The day is here. The day is here. And the effect of, or effect is result. Yes. Affect is to influence a, a vision. But to effect it, it's results that's coming forth. Yes. And to a man, every pastor in that room, when I announced my text, that there shall be no more waiting and no more delay. Yes. Every head came up out of the Bible mm -hmm. because all have had the question, when am I going to see this vision come to pass? Mm -hmm. How long? But the dilemma inside of that, that's a story inside of the story. Yes. Inside of that was the dilemma, who will take my place. Who will take it? Who can I give my inheritance to? Who will perpetuate this, you know, uh, this posterity? Yes. How is this going to go on? Amen. Amen. It's like with your natural blood, sons. But in ministry, we have an obligation to be uh, not ready to die. Yes. Unless someone has been trained to take our place. That's right. That was one of the cries of uh, Abraham. He didn't have an heir. Yes. And he says, God, what will you give me saying, I, I don't have an heir. I only have a, who's a nine for my inheritance is this one Eliezer mm -hmm. who's a steward in my house. Yes. He's not my son. Yes. 
But you know what? Had God not given the son, Eliezer would have gotten the inheritance. Yeah, that's right. And we see that playing out in some places yes. where the sons have gone amok. Yes. And but look yes. what he was praying for. He was praying for a son. For son. Your son may not have shown up yet. That's it. He may not be in your congregation he may yet, not be but there. God, he, God is waiting on you to ask Ooh, him. Hallelujah. We hallelujah. have not because we have not asked. He's waiting on you to ask him for a son so that he can send them in. Just, just like to uh, one of our, uh, your bishop friends in California, God sent him a son that would minister, not his blood son, and his blood son respects the spiritual son that has been sent. Yes, yes. Respects him. But God sent a spiritual son to him that is now taking up some of the responsibility mm -hmm. and he has trained him and he's done everything he was supposed to do. And now he's letting him go forth and do more and do more. And that's the way he may not already be there. Start praying for your son. Yes, the blood sons are serving the one that was laid hands on. That's right. And it may be that the, the, the son that is to be next in line. Yes is a far off, but somewhere watching you. Mm -hmm. Could be watching you on your broadcast, yes. on the internet. Pray for him to come. To pray that God would bring forth sons. We pray that God would send forth those who are sent forth to be in the ministry. Remember, yes. he places them. Yes. Come on. And, and, and praying according to what you need. Don't be afraid to say, Lord, I need a son. Yes. One, I need a son. I need a son that I can pour into. I can pour into. I need one son yeah. He had, um, Elijah had one son. Mm -hmm. Someone and that's trustworthy. That's right. Someone that I can trust. Yes. Glory to that's God. That's it. And then God can bring forth that true son who will serve you. Mm -hmm. Come on. All of his, if it takes all of his life, he'll serve. He will serve with all of his heart. Not trying All to. of your life. Yes, all of and your life. And he's going to take and over. he's going to take over. Yes. And he's going to make sure you have everything you need to fulfill, uh, he, he's going to be like Jonathan's armor bearer. Yes. And in and, and, um, 1 Samuel 14 and 6. Yeah. And uh, Jonathan's daddy saw the captain of the army. He's sitting under the juniper tree in fear. Remember, he got where he could hear pomegranate. from God. Pomegranate tree. He got where he could hear from God. But his son had been in the presence of David the warrior. And he's buoyed by the fact that this is an enemy who's defying God's army. He said, he said, you know, let's go take him. Come on. We're going up to the Philistine garrison. Mm -hmm. For God is, is God is not restrained mm -hmm. to save by many yes. or a few. And the armor bearer said, I'm with you. Yes. He didn't say nothing, but we could die. He was there to serve Jonathan. Mm -hmm. That's where sons are. Yes. They'll, they'll follow their spiritual fathers into battle. Yes. They'll follow them into tough territory. Yes. They'll be with them when things maybe are not so well, even with the ministry. Yes. But they know their assignment and to receive that double portion, yes. they're going to have to be true to that assignment. All right. All right. Let's do this scripture. First Corinthians 4, 14 through 17. We've got six minutes. Amen. So God is saying, amen. That was Malachi 1, 6, 7, and 8 that we talked about. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 14 through 17. And we're going to pick back up here next week and talk about it a whole lot. Because the body of Christ, amen, need fathers to give purpose and identity and a name to uh, minister all these callings, these ministers come on to give a name. Mm -hmm. Name, yes. what is your name? Who are you called to be? Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Yes. It's easy to go out here and say, I'm gonna do that because they're doing it. Uh, I want to have me uh, a social media broadcast because somebody else is doing it. Yeah. Well, I want to get on it and I want to receive you know, a people's uh, giving because somebody, this is the way they're doing it now. Mm -hmm. But are you called to do Ooh, it? Oh, so important. Come on, come on. Yes. Are you sent by God to yes. do it? I can do it too. It's a popular thing to do. God's not calling us to do what's popular. That's right. He's calling us to do what's honorable. Yes. And what's integral, honorable 
And I know this message is for a whole lot more people. I'm not considering just the numbers on the screen, but somebody else is going to get this and hear this and watch this later oh, yeah. and know that this is where God has you to hear and the understanding how the order of God is, how inheritance is received, how legacy is preserved. Psalm 145 and 4 says, one generation shall, shall praise. praise thy words. Another mm -hmm. translation that I like better. One generation shall, shall shout thy words yes. over into another. In other words, shouting into an emerging or coming future generation, yep. what we do. Yes. What I do, because God does, doesn't want it to die. Remember, Elijah had Elisha as his understudy. Yes. But Elisha, when he got ready, when it came time for him to die, he had no understudy. Mm -hmm. He had no armor bearer. That's he right. had nobody to impart to. And when he died, the anointing went with him to the grave That's and right. there was a suffering in the nation yes. because they didn't have that anointing of that prophet yes. preserved. That's right. Wow. Let's read it and let's close. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you, for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, uh, beseech you be ye followers of me for this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church what is Timotheus going to come and do he's going to teach my ways my ways yes as I've taught him what is he going to teach my, my ways. ways that's oh, right oh as I'm in Christ yes come on He's not just teaching the Apostle Paul. That's right. Apostle Paul walked with Christ. Yes. So he's going to come and teach my ways. One final scripture, Genesis 35, and these two are segueing us into next week's teaching. Amen. So God is bringing the fathers, placing fathers. He's causing people to elevate in some releasing pastoring. You pastored long enough. Some he's going, he said, no, I'll call you for counsel now. I need you to build, come on, sons. I need you to make sons. That's how what's on you is going to be perpetuated. If your blood sons are not in line, they ain't the ones. They may not be the ones. That's right. It may be somebody else. You just pray. Come on. That's Don't right. try to force it upon your blood sons. No. Don't do it. Come it on. may not be the call for them. It may not be the call. They may be called to do something yes, else. Yes, may be called a business. Come on. Come on. It may be called to media. Yes. It may be called to government. Could Don't put education. that on them. Amen. Amen. Because we did do them a disservice. And it's a burden that many times when they know they're not called, they, they're they trying to get out from under it. That's because right. Because they know they don't have the call. That's right. Amen. Oh, Amen. here we are, 35 and 18. And this is the backdrop. I said, we need fathers to name us. We need fathers to give us a name. Somebody's going to get a name. Somebody that's been out there ministering and been wondering, how do I do this? How does this go? If I had some help, God want to send a spiritual father into your life. Come on. And it came to pass as her soul was... In departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, this but is, his father yes. called him Benjamin. This is Rachel dying, 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 and at childbirth, she, because of a sorrow, she named the child, but it wasn't the right name. That wasn't the name that God wanted that child to have. That's right. Some of us have been named by a, a Rachel like traditional system, we have been named by a wrong order. We've been a part of something where there may have been Eli's and his sons and given us a name that God didn't give us. Yes. And the name she gave, son of my sorrow. No. But his daddy, come on, yes. stepped in, Jacob stepped in and yes. renamed that child. Yes. No, yes. he shall be called yes. Benjamin, yes. son of my right hand yes. and son of my strength. Yes. Glory to God. Glory well, to God. we're going to pick up here yes. next Sunday yes. talking about fatherhood yes. and what God has called fathers to do. We will value, we will honor, and we won't minimize the importance of fathers in our lives. That's right. We need them. Yes, you need and them. fathers need sons. Come on. That's it. Amen. 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 Well, I'm so glad. Just want to give this information for someone who came maybe midway through. You didn't see it on the front end. That um, that's how you can give if God is leading you to give.
Cash App, PayPal, and then also if you want to give the old-fashioned ways, nothing wrong with that. The PO box is how you can give. And also, um, just a friendly reminder, our um, Family Prayer Revival is Tuesday this week, not Wednesday, Tuesday this yes. week. And so is Morning Manifestation. It also is going to be on Tuesday of this week. So just want to give you that very pertinent information before going off. Thank you for being with us. We love you. We and appreciate you. Yes, and let me say to all the Praise Center members, we're looking for you at 5 a.m. on the prayer line for our regular 5 a.m. prayer in the morning. Amen. God bless you. We love every one of you. We love you all. And the Lord bless you real good.